president of QP Local 79, which represents the uh, City of Toronto employees delivering services on your behalf to Toronto's communities. And I want to thank you for the opportunity, and I want to thank uh, the Board of Health uh, for bringing forward this report on intimate partner violence against women. Um, and particularly, I want to thank you for dedicating it uh, to the memory of Zara Abda, Abdila and her sons who were killed uh, uh, last uh, a year ago this weekend past. Of course, she was a public health nurse, but she was also a member of my local, QP Local 79, so she was a sister to us. And it was a very difficult, uh, emotional period. Uh, I, as others in the room, went to the funeral, a very emotional period at the funeral, but thereafter in the local. So I can't stress enough how important this report is. It's critically important. We must do everything in our power to prevent tragedies like this from ever happening again, whether it's a city employee or anybody else in our communities. The city, the province, the federal government, and QP Local 79 uh, wants to assist in this project, do as much as we possibly can to avoid these tragedies, tragic violent incidents. There's so many recommendations in the report that could be spoken to. Uh, they're all good, and we have some thoughts on how they could be even better from our perspective, but I want to speak about one, and that's the issue of legal supports. My understanding from our interactions with Zara in 2014 was that she took a second job in order to pay for legal supports because they weren't sufficiently available. Zara did uh, meet with the city around her issues. And while I would say the city did some things right, and I can't get into all the details, uh, there probably could have been more that was done from the perspective of her bargaining agent. So the city has a policy on domestic violence, which, which talks about if it becomes aware as an employer under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, comes aware or ought to uh, reasonably to be aware that domestic violence was uh, likely to expose a worker to physical injury, the employer must take every reasonable precaution for the protection of the worker. And the report, I think rightly, talks about the need for education and training in violence in the workplace implementation and further supports. Um, I think page 11 of the report goes into detail about, in consultation and talking to city employees, this was one of the main pieces that's with absence. Um, the recommendation that talks about working with the Occupational Health and Safety Committee is important and ensuring that it's consistent with legislation is one point, there could be other points, but I would suggest that the city needs to make sure, and at one point, it shouldn't be just the Occupational Health and Safety Committee, which I think is the broader Health and Safety Committee, uh, the Joint Committee, it should be committees, workplace committees, uh, uh, which actually have the legal foundation for making changes to, to, to uh, city policies around health and safety. The city can be a leader in driving change to protect women, and I think one of the things it ought to do as a minimum is look at the uh, bill that uh, has passed first reading in the Queen, Queen's Park, and that's Bill 132, Sexual Violence and Harassment Action Plan, Supporting Survivors and Challenging Sexual Violence and Harassment. So it's coming. Let's be leaders and make sure that we're consistent with that bill that should pass the House uh, after further readings. One of the goals of the report by the Toronto Board of Health is to increase the capacity of uh, Toronto Public Health to address intimate uh, partner violence in the workplace. When Bill 132 is passed, it will change the definition of domestic violence under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and the city will need to address, reassess its policies and awareness and implementation in that context, so let's do it proactively. And I want to talk about another piece of this puzzle uh, in terms of how to move forward, because we have to learn lessons. Local 79 and the city worked collaboratively at the bargaining table for a number of rounds to make sure that there were supports and protections for, for our employees, sorry, your employees, our members in the workplace. I played a role in that because I was a man who decided I needed to be on the domestic violence committee because I know people in my family and uh, colleagues who have been victims. And I wanted to make sure that I played a role so the background is we did this, we worked collaboratively at the bargaining table to put language on supports in our collective agreement. Sadly, in 2012, when Local 79 was presented with a final offer by our employer because they refused to bargain, 
They refused to have a discussion about many matters, but specifically they refused to have a discussion about domestic violence. That's not there anymore. There are lots of lessons for collective bargaining to come out of 2012, but one of them is to work collaboratively. And I'll just say, finally, it's so important, again, that this report is coming forward, and we have to work to make sure all city divisions provide a safe workplace for their employees, not only under the Act, but beyond. Uh, and to borrow from the labor movement in terms of health and safety, it's important that we, quote, we mourn for the dead, but that we fight for the living. Let's fight for people in situations like Zara was. Very much. Any questions of the deputant? Uh, I, sorry, go ahead, Councillor Cressing. Thank you. Just one, I, and I understand there's some details that you can't share, but just following up on what you're talking about around the legal expenses, are you suggesting that the recommendations here could be strengthened in order to address those? I'm suggesting yes, the recommendations could probably be strengthened around that to make sure um, that it can be strengthened and make sure that the city as an employer acting like a lead employer, a model employer, can provide its employees with whatever the appropriate supports are, that are needed, including uh, legal supports, psychological supports, other supports that, uh, that could, could be there. Okay. Thank you, Tim.